Hi everyone, welcome to this new video uh, about a very important topic on which I've been asked quite a bit. So I thought I'd rather make just to make a video about it, which is creating a cloud security roadmap. Uh, I think this is one of the first steps and possibly the most difficult if your organization is embarking on a cloud security journey. You know, you, you want to know how to like secure your cloud footprint and you need to have a roadmap, right? And you really, I, I mean, I cannot stress upon you just how important this topic is. Because if you do this step wrong, what's going to happen is going to lead to wrong investments down the road. You know, you're going to waste your time, you're going to waste money and potentially worst case scenario, you can actually have data breaches because you didn't focus on the right part, right? I mean, the cloud and digital adoption has skyrocketed the last couple of years and without a proper roadmap in place, you can have serious problems down the road. So, uh, I mean, as CISOs and CIOs, you sit down and you work out, hey, what's the best approach to secure our card workloads? You're going to have a lot of information coming at you, which can be quite frustrating, right? So based on my, this is based on my own experience, based on numerous cloud implementations I have done, I decided to like create a roadmap based on the key success factors, you know, for a successful cloud implementation. Let me have your feedback and do comment what you think I could have added, changed. Uh, just uh, So this is what I've made, guys. Like, this is like a draft roadmap. This is not too high level and this is not too detailed, okay? Because I didn't want to make it too high level, so then it really doesn't help anybody, right? And it, if it's too detailed, then you really cannot apply it to your organization, okay? And if you will see one thing, I have deliberately avoided talking about stuff like risk assessments and vulnerability assessments, PTs, penetration testing, uh, reviewing your users. Those are basic security activities you're already doing, right? This is specifically for your cloud journey. So if you can see, it's, it's divided into three phases, which is foundational, implement, and optimize. So let's take a look at it, and I'll uh, come back to this. This is just a high level, a draft roadmap for a company who is embarking on a cloud security journey. Okay, so first step is what? Setting the foundation. This is the, guys, uh, one of the most common reasons, you know, why cloud security projects fail is CISOs want to copy paste their on-prem into the cloud, and they don't understand that. Uh, not understanding the cloud, it is going to result in very powerful features being missed out. So it's very important to have like a foundational element. So this is what I call the confusion phase. Right? People are like, uh, this is what the expression CISOs have, I think, at this time. So because you're trying to understand and three activities which you want to focus on, which is in, in this phase, which is understanding your regulatory framework, understanding your shared responsibility and ramping up your skills. Okay. So what am I talking about? First step is a regulatory framework, right? So this is the, why you need to understand because you need to know what regulations are there for your particular geography, right? I mean, if you don't, you know what can happen? You can potentially move data which you're not authorized to move and you can get hit with severe regulatory fines down the road. Uh, certain countries, they don't allow their data to be moved out of their boundaries, right? And they fine you like anything if they find out. And like, so you need to know, hey, uh, what am I like uh, required to be governed by? Uh, whether it's HIPAA, PCI, DSS, SOC 2, uh, GDPR, make sure to engage with your legal and regulatory de departments and find out what are the do's and don'ts for your particular sector. You need to know what data is going into the cloud, what the controls will be, what questions you have to answer when the regulator will come knocking, right? Okay, one good thing is, like, uh, what, which is very nice, uh, that most of the clouds, uh, most of the, cl like, the big cloud providers, they already have done the foundational work. They're already certified to PCI, GDPR, HIPAA, uh, SOC type two. So you just have to do the last mile. Just one thing, uh, one question which I'm asked a lot, does like Azure or AWS being PCI certified mean that I, I will be PCI certified when I move? No, uh, that will get to that as part of the shared responsibility model. So let me be very clear. You are not going to be PCI or GDPR or HIPAA compliant just by moving to Azure or AWS. You still have to do that extra last mile. You still have to do it. Which brings me to my next topic, which is what? Which is uh, the shared responsibility model. It's one of the most important things you need to know right before you implement anything on the cloud. Most companies, they have the mistaken assumption that going forward, AWS or Microsoft or Google will handle everything and all the security obligations are gone. This is a huge, huge mistake as security is a shared responsibility, like I said. So it gets divided between the provider and the customer and, and it changes depending on what model you're using. I put in a sample of AWS because they have infrastructure services, right? That's like the vanilla uh, model which they have. And you have container, you have managed. So slowly, slowly, their responsibility increases. But So you need to understand a uh, lot of the foundational work is done by them, but you still, you have to do the extra mile and you have to do stuff which you're doing. The, the best example of this is like the landlord-tenant model, which I like to say. What does that mean? Like if you're living in a rented property, right? 
So the landlord is going to do some stuff for you. He's going to make sure the building is secure. He's going to make sure like the uh, uptake, the general uptake of the property, the property is maintained, but he's not going to come in and like lock your doors and windows at night, right? That's your responsibility. So you can't say, hey, man, the, the, the landlord was supposed to do this. So just keep this in mind. You, you, you have responsibilities based on whatever model you're going with. You need to know what are what are my obligations? What is the cloud provider obligation? That will save you some serious problems down the road. When you suddenly realize, hey, man, I'm, I'm supposed to patch. I thought Microsoft was supposed to do the patching, but you're not on a managed service. So Azure or Microsoft will not, Azure, AWS will not manage the patching. So please be very, very clear upon this on what you what your responsibilities are and what the cloud providers are. The Okay, and the last step in the foundational phase is the skill ramp up. So if you are a CISO and you're starting a cloud security journey, a key foundational step is to build a cloud security skill within your teams. Uh, do not solely rely on external consultants as they will usually leave when the project finishes. And it is the internal teams that will pick up, pick up the burden, you know, of running day-to-day -day operations. If your teams don't know how to secure infrastructure as code, uh, containers, serverless, they're going to be a big problem uh, at a severe disadvantage later on. And they won't be able to like fight back against, push back against the technology teams because they don't understand it. So there really is no excuse. There are numerous free and paid trainings. You have all sorts of certification parts from Azure, from Google, from AWS. And the team itself will be happy if you invest in them. They will see as the vote of self-confidence, right? That the management is taking investment on them. So this is the, what the foundational phase was, guys. Let's move on to the next one, which is securing the securing the cloud. Actually, the actual now that you have a solid implement a foundational knowledge, along with regulatory approval, hopefully, yeah. Now we can start looking at how to secure the cloud environment. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, don't try to blindly copy paste what you're using on-prem, but always try to use the native cloud. Now this phase is the one which has the most stress and the most effort. Uh, so let's take a look. Yeah, this is what I mean. So basically, this is what the CSO look like usually in this phase because there's a lot of fighting going back. Uh, this is a typical CISO expression. The two main things you can do in this phase is benchmark and create your security model. Uh, what do I mean by that? Okay, so you're moving to the cloud. The first, best and most quickest way to immediately know your security posture in the, in the cloud is to enable security benchmarking against best practices. Like uh, I would recommend the CIS benchmark for cloud, uh, like CIS benchmark they have for AWS, Azure, Google. Good news is from day one, providers like Google, Azure, AWS already provide you prefab configured benchmarks against which you can measure your environments. Turn them on from day one, you'll get some very, very quick security wins within your cloud, which can be, which will definitely be appreciated by my management. Like you have things like AWS Security Hub, Security Azure Security. I think Azure Security Center is now called Microsoft Defender, uh, Google Compliance Center. Uh, turn them on right from day one. Uh, the other thing is, please do not freak out by the number of highs and mediums that are there. That is normal for any environment. Make sure that you have a good risk tracking process in place so that nothing gets left left out, uh, because you'll be handling juggling so many things you might forget something. Okay. Now in this phase. Now you've done the benchmarking. Now you start to do the really hard work, which is the cloud security model. You need to focus on certain areas, guys, to really secure your cloud and align it to best practices. What are those like? Okay, let's talk about identity. Your identity becomes a firewall in the cloud. So focus there as the first priority. Most people think when I'm talking about securing identity is turning on MFA and password policy. Uh, no, you need to create a proper security ecosystem. The best thing you can do uh, is integrated with a single sign-on if you already have it, because then you don't have to manage a separate set of identities and it will inherit all the policies that are already there. That will be a big, big plus. Okay. Apart from that, logging and alerting. So this is one of those areas. It's uh, very easy to either do too much or do too less. C creating too many alerts, uh, your team will get flooded. Your mailbox will get flooded too few and you might miss out on critical things. So the good thing is if you already enabled benchmarking, so you just need to translate a lot of those high items into alerts and add your own based on what your environment is. Okay, uh, our next step is what workload protection. So this is, I mean, you, like, you know, in the cloud, you have VMs, you have containers, you have clusters, all of them, you need to make sure like they are secure or not. Your VMs should be spinning up from golden images from your, like the image of the VM should be hardened, should have everything, your uh, antivirus, your hardening, your logging, everything should be there, right? Or container images would have to be scanned and spin up. Runtime uh, protection has to be there. So you have to make this as a minimum protection. This differs from organization to organization, but you definitely already will have a standard. And this is a good thing to copy from your on-prem actually. And uh, threat intel. So one of the most awesome things on the cloud, guys, is how much threat intel you can get thanks to providers like Azure, 
uh, Google, AWS, who have invested already billions in threat intel, right? And customers benefit from that. This data is fed into the cloud services, so that can really help you to detect early detection. Enable these services early on, so you can start learning from day one, and you, you have a baseline which you can later on like uh, proactively use to take action. One thing I think I didn't mention was encryption, right? A lot of this is dictated by what regulations you're using, like PCI, PII, GDPR. So know what the encryption controls you need for sensitive data, both at West and Transit. AWS and so on, all of them, they provide you some amazing managed services for handling cryptographic keys, which will take away the hassle of managing HSMs in-house. Again, this depends a lot on what sort of regulations you guys are under. So, okay. Phase three, we've reached. Now you've done your model, your benchmarking, you have the foundation optimizing. This is a phase which you actually try to start to enjoy being on the cloud. You, you start seeing the power which is there. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so this is uh, this is where you actually start to see security teams being happy and smiling like this, right? <laughs> so you start getting confidence in your cloud controls and you, sh you can now shift your focus to more strategic work. Uh, a few key areas, guys, to look in this phase is what? Uh, fine tuning risk tracking and attack simulation. So what am I talking about? Fine tuning. Now you have controls there, right? Now you can focus on really uh, benefiting from the cloud. Turn on auto remediation, okay? Uh, because auto remediation, now you can now you know which alerts are there, which are just generic alerts. You can turn on auto remediation. So your security teams can focus on more productive work. Uh, optimize the alerts, which is fine tune the alert logic. You know what is working, what is not. Now you can start cleaning it up. Uh, speaking of cleaning up, adjusting permissions, uh, cleaning up of cloud permissions, granted in the earlier phases all of us know the initial permissions we give they are always to open because we want to like have the migration done but now you know what needs to be there and what not to be there you can fine tune it accordingly and last thing which i definitely recommend guys enhancing your tool set through things like slack and pager duty the cloud is really really fast don't rely on emails have things like slack which can create automation workflows through your pipelines and everything and pager duty which can really like be a game changer i'm not endorsing these products i mean you can use open source or free ones if you want. I'm just saying that uh, have that mindset, you know, of these uh, these sort of tools which can really optimize your environment. Okay, uh, risk tracking. Uh, this is right at the, like I said, so risk tracking, uh, I mean, uh, you already would have a risk process there in place, but what I mean is you have to be very pragmatic when you're implementing cloud security. Cloud security, in, uh, what I've seen is, it's one of those areas which is either underrepresented or overrepresented. You can do too much, so like a, what do you call, you can put too many controls and the business will get frustrated and try to sideline you because they feel that you're trying to stop them. Or you can do the other thing, which is that the, uh, the, you can rush to like put too many things into the cloud and what happens is, and without understanding how the cloud is working and you're, you know, you miss out on some critical things. So we, you have to be pragmatic, realize you'll never ever get that lovely 100% completion. You need to know what works, what doesn't work and what needs risk acceptance. So do a cleanup so you can focus on what matters. And like I said, be pragmatic, be realistic. Uh, realize what can be done, what cannot be done. Okay, last guys, the last step, is, which is attack simulation. Now I'm I'm not talking about incident response here, guys. Incident response you should definitely have if you are a security company. I mean, I'm not gonna teach you about incident response. You probably know more than me. But what I mean in the cloud, the old methods don't cut it. I mean, they're not bad, but you know, they uh, alerting, metricing, uh, metrics, logging. They're all reactive, right? And uh, like you can have pen testing and we all those things are good, but the cloud is a very complex environment. So something which I found very fascinating and you can read this book, uh, Chaos Engineering. It's a proactive approach. You actually try to make your system crash. Netflix has implemented it within their organization, right? Things like uh, companies like Slack, Google, Microsoft, LinkedIn, all of them, they, they are looking at this. What do I mean by that? You actually try to make your system crash. Okay, you think you know, you think you've implemented security, right? Keep on doing your incident response. I want you to go in there, try to make S3 public, bucket public, try to actually crash your system. Uh, okay, we'll try to make somebody an administrator and see what happens. If, is the developer getting like a Slack message? Is the security team getting a notification? Is it being reverted back? Try to make your system crash. Don't do it in your production system, obviously. Try to make a replica and try to crash it as much as possible. You will not believe how many things you will find. And this is a very excellent book. I would recommend Going through it, it'll, it'll really be a game changer in how you approach what you call testing and really testing the resiliency of your cloud environment, be it security or availability. So just going back, guys, to what I initially ta talked about, this is basically the uh, roadmap I'm talking about. If you want this, just ping me. Uh, I can send you this model also. But you can, of course, make this up. This is like make up your own. 
but these are the key areas i would focus on based on my experience and this will really help you out uh, you can of course add to it and you can remove some things if you want but these are the minimum things i would definitely recommend and the mindset also to have so i hope this help you out guys uh, please do subscribe to my channel and like this video if you thought it was useful uh, i also have a blog and a website so you can subscribe to that also thank you very much and i'll see you in the next video